Now in this video, we're going to be showing you how you can make a proper yeast nutrient using dead yeast hulls, which basically means that we're not going to be using these as a yeast nutrient. We're going to be using this as a yeast nutrient. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now for a natural winemaking channel such as this one, why am I talking about yeast nutrients? I mean, aren't raisins good enough? <laughs> well, actually no, raisins are not good enough. They provide such a tiny little bit of nutrients that it's really not worth it. You may have seen me in my earlier videos where I've used raisins a lot and sometimes even call them my, my, my substitute for yeast nutrients. Well, I've long since given up that and simply have gone without. But if you've ever had fermentations that have kind of been kind of, well, finicky, they're kind of stuck, or more so often you might have a, a fermentation that has a hydrogen sulfide smell, of which I've had three of those, uh, you might be kind of figuring, hey, there might be something wrong with the yeast. It might be a little bit stressed, especially if you're not giving it any nutrients. Now, yeah, there are nutrients out there, such as Fermate K and DAP or diammonium phosphate, or from a, or go firm rather. Uh, but again, because of the philosophy of this channel, they don't sell those at the grocery store. So that's just something I just don't use. In fact, the only thing you see me using on this channel that it does not come from the uh, grocery store has been the use of wine yeast. And generally when I'm using, a, showing you the list of ingredients and I've got wine yeast that now, down there on the table, I will say that this still works. So you've got options. Uh, I want to make this one a very short video. We're just going to show you the making of a yeast nutrient that you can use for all of your subsequent brews. I'll be using that for many of my subsequent brews. Uh, uh, going forward, it's a very simple process. There will not be a side-by-side -side, uh, uh, comparison between a non-fermentation uh, 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 without uh, yeast nutrient and one with uh, yeast nutrient. That will be in a later video. I just want to show you how to make the stuff. Later on, we'll show you how to use the stuff. Um, let's see, one other thing. Yeah, one other thing is that uh, I'm now beginning to see the uh, uh, a product, uh, basically yeast flakes, which again, will provide you all the nutrients that uh, 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 the dried yeast whole, uh, yeast nutrient that we're gonna be making later on. Uh, it's just that it's more in a, uh, a compact form. It's already, it's already made, basically. Uh, you may see me using that uh, only just because it saves time, uh, but I will make references in later videos that uh, if you want to see how you can make it uh, without buying it at the grocery store, uh, this is what this video is going to talk about. Now then, enough said. Let's see how to make it. Now to make our yeast nutrient, we're going to need one pack of bread yeast about one cup or 250 milliliters. You do not need to be precise of water. We're going to need a food grade temperature thermometer. We'll need a small pot or pan. And if we're not gonna be using our yeast nutrient right away, a storage container to store it in. And that's what we're gonna be using to make our yeast nutrient. Now the process is really very simple. All you need to do is put in your yeast, Put in your water, turn the stove on, and bring it to a boil. Now that our yeast water is coming to a boil, we want to keep an eye on the temperature because we want to make sure that the temperature at least reaches 165, which is the temperature required to kill the yeast. Now the reason why I used one cup of water, could have used less, was because I don't want the thermometer resting on the bottom of the pot that's going to give a wrong reading. Since it's a small pot, I can just tilt it and just dip in the thermometer and read the temperature, which at this point is well above oops, 165, which is high enough such that I can now say that our yeast is dead. Let's just go ahead and turn off the, the heat and we can put a cover on that and wait for it to come down to room temperature. Now one thing about 
doing this versus pasteurization to kill off the yeast is that because there's no alcohol to contend with that will start evaporating at 174 degrees temperature, uh, now that we've gone above the 165 that we, that we only need it, it's still perfectly fine. The desired effect, once again, was to kill the yeast. Now that our yeast nutrient has come down to room temperature, let's go ahead and transfer that to our little storage container. Give it a little swirl just to mix everything up and pour it in. Now this container has been sanitized using one of my sanitizers of choice, whether yours is Star Sand or One Step. That's entirely up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and put, a, put the cap on. Now, in terms of how much of this you want to use, and there's about, if I can get a measuring point, I'd say about a quarter of a cup, or like a third of a cup, but between a quarter and a third of a cup. Now, they say on average, the recommended dosage for yeast nutrient in a gallon of wine is about well, roughly five grams or one teaspoon in its you know, powdered or solid state. Now there are 20 grams, in, case, in this case 21 grams in a packet of yeast. So I'm assuming that we're going to be using one quarter of our mixture per gallon of wine or mead. So basically whatever, whatever amount of water you use and whatever is left, just use a quarter of what you made and put that in your, in your, in your, uh, your project and let it go from there. Now, of course, if you're not going to be using this right away, you can just go ahead and put that in the refrigerator. If you're not going to be using it for a while, you can just go ahead and put that in the freezer and thaw it out when you're ready to use it. And that is what we're going to be using going forward to making our wines and meads. Now, if you have any questions or if you have, better yet, any suggestions as to how to improve the process, uh, leave those in the comment section. Uh, we can talk about those uh, at length if necessary. Uh, we've got a pretty lively community out there that if I don't know the answer, and I'm probably not going to know the answer, uh, someone can chime in and uh, see if we can improve this process uh, more so than what we've done so far. But there we go. My take on making a yeast nutrient. If you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. Better yet, become a member and we'll do more of these videos in the future.